Hey Divination, thank you for joining us in this tutorial where I will be showing you how to use section dividers to create textured backgrounds with Divi. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Now before we dive into the tutorial, let's take a quick look at the example that will show you how to recreate step by step within this tutorial. So this is the desktop version. Then we have the following tablet version. And last but not least, this is what it looks like on phone. And we'll also provide you with some alternative section divider styles, as you can see over here and over here. Now, there are some elements that will make this design possible, even if you're designing something else. And before I start recreating this example, I want to share these uh, elements with you. So the first one is making sure that the padding of your section, of your first section at the bottom, is zero. So if we remove this over here, you'll see that some space will get created over here. So you have to make sure that this is zero over here. And same counts for the second section, but in this case, you will need to make sure that the top padding is zero. Otherwise, the space will be created over here. All right, and the same counts for your row. So if I open the row settings over here and go to the spacing, you can see that I've put zero pixels for each one of the possibilities. And if I remove this one for, for the bottom, for example, you can see that the space uh, over here is really unnecessary so just make sure that you always put that to zero and the same counts for this second row over here so you'll have to make sure that the top padding is zero all right so the next thing i want to mention is the section divider settings over here so if i go to the dividers subcategory and i go to the bottom one because i'll be recreating a bottom one over here um, you can see that i've increase the divider height and you can increase this up to as much as you want it to overlap with your row and i've also created a horizontal repeat that is more than the usual and i've also used a divider color that is semi-transparent um, because this will make sure that the text remains readable for example if i put this to a much higher value this still looks good, but the text is a little bit less readable, um, but this depends on your preferences. But if you just want to keep it subtle, make sure that you have a transparent color over here. And the last thing that I'll need to mention is the gradient background for the row. So I'll just open the row settings over here, go to the background subcategory, and over here you can see that my first color is completely transparent. And if I were to change this, you can see that the effect is really different, so make sure that you have a transparent color so the background color of your section or the gradient background of your section will come through along with the section dividers. So the first thing we're going to do is add a new page and give our page a title. Then we'll publish this page. Enable the Divi Builder and switch over to Visual Builder right away. And we already have a section over here, so we're going to make some modifications to it. So just open the section settings, go to the background subcategory and give it the following background color. On top of this background color, we'll also add a gradient background. And that's because our first color is semi-transparent and we want it to combine with the background color. So use the following color codes, scroll down Use 150 degrees for your gradient direction and 37% for your end position. Then move on to the design tab, open the divider subcategory and we're going to add a bottom divider to this section and we'll choose the following divider style. And we're going to use a semi-transparent divider color as well and we'll increase the height to 300. Then we'll put the horizontal repeat to five for desktop and two for tablet and phone. All 
All right, scroll down the design tab, open the spacing subcategory, add 65 pixels to the top padding, zero pixels to the right, the bottom and the left. And as mentioned before, it's important that you use zero pixels for the bottom padding over here. So there won't be any space between the row and the section. So next let's add a row with two columns. And before we add any modules to it, let's open the row settings, go to the background subcategory and we'll add a gradient background to this row using the following color codes. If you want to find all of these settings step by step, you can go to the blog post, which I have mentioned in the description below. Then put your gradient direction to 40 degrees. Use 62% for your start position and 91% for your end position. And this is the result that you get. Now we're going to add a gradient background to the first column. So use the following color codes. Scroll down. Use 140 degrees for your gradient direction. And put the end position to 78%. Next, we'll add a background image to this column and we're going to combine the gradient background and the background image by selecting multiply as our background image blend. As you can see, that is what it looks like. Then open the sizing subcategory within the design tab and use custom width with a value of 1,700. Use custom gutter width as well, put that to one. And then you'll see that there's no space between the columns. And make sure that you equalize column heights as well. Then open the spacing subcategory. And again, it's very important that your bottom padding over here is zero. So there won't be any space left between the end of your section and the end of your row. Next, let's add some rounded corners. So we're going to add 50 pixels to the top left and the right. And last but not least, we'll also add some box shadows. So just choose the first option. Let's continue by adding our module. So we'll start off with an image module, which we'll add to the second column. And this image module is meant for tablet and phone. So go to the filter subcategory and choose an opacity of 40% because we want these section dividers to come through. Then open the visibility subcategory and disable this image module on desktop. Let's move on with the text module. So start by adding your first text module. Go to the design tab, open the text subcategory, make sure that your text font weight is ultra bold. Use uppercase. Change your text size to 40 pixels. And the following color code for your text. Put your text line height to one and use center text orientation. Then open the spacing subcategory and add 100 pixels to the top margin. Now let's add another text module. Again, go to the design tab, open the text subcategory and enable uppercase. And choose 30 pixels for the text size and give it a white text color. Put your text line height to one and use center text orientation once again. And we're going to create some space between these text modules by giving 20 pixels to the top margin. And the last text module we'll need to add is for the description. So go ahead and enter your text over here. Go to the design tab. Open the text subcategory and give your text the following color and use either center or left text orientation, depending on your preferences. 
then open the sizing subcategory and use 55% for the width and center module alignment. Now the last thing we're going to do is add some top and bottom margin to create some space. And now we can start creating our second section over here. So start by adding a standard section right below the section you've created. And open the section settings. The first thing you will need to do is add a gradient background to it using the following color codes. Scroll down and use 166 degrees for the gradient direction and 38% for the start position. Move on to the design tab and we're going to add a top divider to this section and we're going to choose the same divider style as we did for the bottom divider of the first section and again we're going to use a semi-transparent color and we'll use the same values for the divider height and the horizontal repeat as we did for the bottom divider of the first section. So put that to two for tablet and phone. Scroll down, open the spacing subcategory, and again, very important to have zero pixels for the top padding over here. And I'm just going to add 68 pixels to the bottom as well, just to create that space between my row and my section afterwards. Now I'll just clone this row over here because we're going to reuse it and make some modifications to it. So go ahead and open the row settings. Go to the background subcategory and we're going to change um, this gradient background over here. We're going to change the second color into this color code. Again, you can find all of the settings by going to the blog post, which I have mentioned in the description below. So go ahead and change your gradient direction as well. Put the star position to 74% and use 100% for the end position. Then remove the first column background image and gradient background because we're going to place it in the second column. Use the following color codes for the gradient background. Scroll down, modify your gradient direction into 109 degrees. and add your column background image and make sure that you use multiply as your background image blend which will combine your background image with the gradient background then go to the design tab open the border subcategory and we're going to add these rounded corners to the bottom left and right side instead of the top which gives the following result all right now the next thing we'll do is drag all of these modules to the left side, so to the first column. So go ahead and do this for each one of the modules, simply drag them to the first column. All right. The last thing that you'll need to do is change the image module to match with new image that you're using for this row and you're done. Now you can use this method with any divider style that you want and I'm just going to show you two alternatives. So open the section settings, go to the divider subcategory bottom of the first section and choose the following divider style and do the same for the second section as well. And this is what it looks like. Now let's change it to another divider style, which also looks pretty good. So scroll down the list until you come across the following divider style and do the same for the second section as well. And 
And here you have the results. So now that we've gone through all the steps, let's take a final look at what we have recreated within this tutorial. So within the Divi Builder itself, it looks like this, um, but certain elements are hidden on desktop. And once we go see the live results, this is what we get on desktop. These are the different divider styles that we're using for this. So you can choose for yourself which one you prefer. And then we have the tablet version and the mobile version as well. Well, that was all for this tutorial. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to all our social media channels so you'll get a notification every time we have something new for you. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.